Hello everyone! Welcome back to another jewelry tutorial. Today, we are making this wire-wrapped birthstone ring. Featuring light rose crystals from Swarovski for the month of October. I'm starting off this project with a piece of 20 gauge round sterling silver dead soft wire at about 8 inches in length. Determine the middle of the wire and bend it in half with a loop using the round nose pliers. Hammer the loop flat using a chasing hammer and steel block. This will give the band some strength and some shine that will catch the light. Now grab the 26 gauge sterling silver wire. I'm going to be working off the spool, but you will need at least three to four feet for this part. Now thread one four millimeter bead. I am using a Swarovski crystal bead in light rose for the October birthstone ring. Let the bead fall on the wire while you start to secure the two wires together. Start by threading the wire through the loop from the back, then wrapping the wire over the top of the loop and continue to coil the wire like this at least three to four times to secure it. Take your time with these wraps and make them as neat as possible because this will be showing on the front of the ring when we are finished. I'm going to bring this bead back to the loop and secure it using the wire on the other side of the bead. Trim the excess wire and tuck in the end with the chain nose pliers.
Okay, the bead is now on, and we will continue coiling the wire on the opposite side. This coil is much longer on this side and will become the wrap on the band where these two base wires meet. I'm trying to keep these wraps as tight and clean as I can. I'm using the round nose pliers to squeeze the wires together. This is going to help me determine where to start wrapping the band. We can still fit a few more coils in there. Okay, that looks good. Start wrapping the two wires together by coiling around the wires twice. Be sure to not wrap too tightly here.
Flatten the coil with the chain nose pliers. Now thread the wire back through the middle and begin coiling the top wire again. This first coil will be a bit tricky. Hopefully you didn't wrap the first two wires too tightly. Continue coiling the wire for four to five times before wrapping the two wires together again. I'm going to continue this pattern for the entire ring band. As I get going, I am not over tightening these wraps, but I am being firm and deliberate about it. Always take your time with these wraps. Continue this weave until you reach the ring shank length you need for the size you are making. I'm making a size seven and a half, so I'll need this to be about 59 millimeters long.
As you go, you may notice that your ring band is twisting. But that's okay, just keep bending it back as you wrap. Okay, the wrap is finally long enough. It looks good. Now it's time to trim the wire. I always leave a little extra wire in case I need to extend the wrap. Now bend the ring band around your ring mandrel. Start by wrapping the band two to three sizes too small. When you let go of the ring band, it should fall to the size that you intended. Separate the two wires like this. Trim the excess wire and tuck in the end. Now we have something that looks like this. Put the band back onto the mandrel. Holding the ring in place, bend the two wires around the bead and cross them on the other side. Take the ring off of the mandrel again. Clip the wires enough so they will bend easily into the ring band. Sometimes it's a little difficult to deal with ends that are too long. Now, carefully bend the wires into the ring band. Slowly pull each wire through at the same time, or alternating sides. This part is a bit tricky, so take your time. This is going to be the focal part of the ring. Take the bottom wire and pull it and bend it out to the side. Then tighten it a little bit with the pliers. Now take the top wire and pull it through to meet up with the bottom wire. Put the piece back on the ring mandrel. Press your thumb onto the bead firmly and use the pliers to wrap the wires up and over the top of the ring band. Trim the wires and tuck in the ends. Put the ring back on the mandrel one more time to check the size. I'm using the rawhide hammer to flatten the wraps a little bit and to make sure that the ring keeps its shape.
This ring is complete. If you like this ring, please let me know by liking this video and subscribing for more tutorials. If you would like me to make you one of these rings in your birthstone colors, please check out my Etsy shop, which is in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching everyone.